This is a technical drawing of the paddle wheel of the Waverley, the world's last seagoing passenger carrying paddle steamer. She was built in 1946 for the London and North Eastern Railway to provide a maritime link between rail stations around the Firth of Clyde. Her paddle wheels are particularly interesting because they illustrate a key moment of innovation in paddle wheel technology. The wheels have eight timber paddle floats, each 11 feet wide and 3 feet deep. The diameter of the paddle wheel to the centre of its floats is 13 feet 10 inches. Each wheel weighs 8 tonnes, that's about the same as 4 minis. The wheels are distinctive because of their float feathering gear. The role of the feathering system is to make the paddle wheels more efficient by making sure that they are almost vertical as they enter and leave the water. This reduces friction and maximises their propulsive force. By overlaying a paddle wheel with a feathering system over one without, we can see that the floats are 29 degrees closer to vertical upon entering the water and 21 degrees closer to vertical on exiting than those without feathering. There are three main components that drive this mechanism. A star centre which rotates and is also known as the Jenny Nettles, Scottish slang for the daddy long legs that bears a distinct resemblance to the feathering gear. There are also the radius rods and driving arms. The star centre is attached to the paddle box's spring beam and is offset from the centre of the paddle wheel. It is driven by number one radius rod to make it rotate with the paddle wheel. As it does so, the other radius rods, each connected to driving arms, change the angle of the paddle float relative to the paddle wheel. At typical engine revolutions of 42 rpm, each paddle float moves through the water at 30 feet per second, giving a typical cruising speed of around 14 knots. For all of this technical innovation, paddle ships made way for screw propulsion over time, as propellers were far more efficient. Nonetheless, the paddle wheel did retain some particular advantages. Notably, it suited vessels of shallow draught. This was a particular advantage for the Waverley, as she was regularly required to berth at Craigendoran Pier. A key stop with direct access to the LNER railway, though one with a very shallow pier. The result was a ship fit for purpose, but which also harked back to an older age of maritime travel, and one which you can still enjoy today. Mm.